Hi guys, look at this fig on my uh, bench. Yes, it totally looks like uh, my sign uh, nose cone, but it is not because it is a uh, my sign tail cone. We have here the uh, radio control receiver tail from uh, Soviet K5 missile. NATO code name was AA1 Alkali. So it is a device I got from uh, eBay uh, quite a few years ago. It was, uh, if I remember, uh, 50 euros, but it was completely funded by uh, selling and rebuying and buying uh, things on eBay and I did manage to uh, fund it uh, completely. So as you can see it is an aluminium uh, cone with uh, very old school electronics inside. I am missing for some parts, in particular the an antenna in fact poking here, out here with uh, probably a waveguide. But uh, before uh, having a detailed look at the thing I will show uh, photos of uh, my style and of a complete, uh, complete uh, setup without the missing part. So here you can see a K5 missile in, uh, mounted on an aircraft. The NATO code name was AA1 Alkali. It is the first ever design of a Soviet air to air missile design started in 1951 and the device entered service in uh, 1957. It seems it was removed from service from in uh, 1977 together with the last Soroy 9 aircraft. So it had uh, 20 years uh, of existence. The part I have is the one in the red uh, circle in the photo. So as you can see, it is the tail of the missile. There is the antenna poking at the extreme uh, right of the thing, the extreme end of the uh, missile. And uh, the missile was uh, motorized with two little thrusters on the side. You can see one just in front of the red circle. So the missile was remote controlled from the launcher aircraft. The launcher aircraft did have the radar following the target and uh, the system to remote control the missile it allowed to uh, not put a radar in the missile which was probably not possible back in the time with uh, Soviet uh, technology radars were still very heavy and very power hungry the only uh, thing in the nose of this missile is probably uh, target proximity sensor either optical or uh, radio target proximity sensor. What else? The total uh, length of the missile is 2.5 meters. It weighs 82 kilos and it had a uh, range up to 6 kilometers. It seems there are still a few of them uh, available for sea in uh, some museums but not a lot obviously, uh, all the other was, were destroyed. For some reason, the receiver uh, part did uh, somewhat survive and I did see several of them for sale on e eBay. There was a big factory in uh, Berlin uh, responsible for uh, taking apart all my sales. And uh, it seems this part uh, did uh, survive and uh, was available uh, in uh, surplus. It is an inert part except maybe for the auto destruction cartridge, which was uh, all the time uh, have been properly removed by the staff doing the decommissioning. Here is a uh, eBay photo of a complete device with the part I am uh, missing. As you can see, it is a needle shape antenna poking out of the thing with uh, some uh, clear uh, thing at the end, clear piece. And it seems it continue is extend to the upper uh, compartment of the cone after the uh, receiver uh, section. It looks like on the photo I can guess some kind of uh, waveguide and uh, electrical connections going to it with a quite a bulky uh, rear uh, end at this uh, piece. 
it is uh, attached uh, to the frame at least with the three screws on the top you can see them you can guess them uh, just uh, beside my uh, arrow on the left you can guess the screw uh, the side uh, view of the screws and maybe other screws in the middle of uh, what I believe is the receiver uh, radio receiver part so first one here you can see uh, the parts are the same uh, all the way you have uh, vacuum tubes with uh, this little uh, metal clamp to keep them in place you have uh, mica capacitors uh, power resistor like so and uh, uh, metal can uh, oil paper capacitor soviet very uh, typical uh, very regular stuff some other kind of capacitors at the bottom and regular or red soviet resistors so here you have the interconnects between this part and the top part uh, normally they are linked with a solder bridge but uh, there is no more solder at this time and in fact I did receive it already taken apart and it was a total mess because these screws were missing so these parts were not uh, attached and I had to uh, search a little bit how it was possibly uh, put together I think it is the correct way in fact they did make solder bridge here to connect the two parts if I turn it around, this top uh, compartment is not very filled, you can see set of capacitors and uh, tubes this hole is uh, where uh, resides, uh, lies no normally is the uh, the end of the antenna with um, waveguide and uh, connect probably coax uh, connection out of the waveguide here you can see the kind of assembly you have the capacitors are kept in place with a metal plate and on this screw they use the screw for putting a power resistor quite uh, well the setup but they need to use all the available space by the way here you have a model number for this part DB23 with a serial number 682086. Okay, now we will go to the lower uh, level, like so. So, on this screw here, you have uh, the remains of a uh, factory cell, some sticker. Here, you have uh, wire looms. Uh, the um, socket for tubes here like so here we have another kind of uh, capacitor they are uh, sealed in a ceramic uh, tube very nice uh, model of capacitor not sure uh, maybe you can see here this one how it is with grey body and uh, ceramic tube here we have uh, a bakelite plate with uh, components mounted on it here you can see a bunch of resistors uh, soldered directly to the tube sockets at this level and this uh, spot here empty spot I believe it is for fitting an auto destruction uh, charge if it is this it looks like a um, brass cylinder filled with uh, C4 explosive and uh, detonator and it allows uh, auto destruction of a device the Soviet did use them on some uh, spy uh, radio sets and uh, encryption device I know not sure it uh, I have seen a photo of them and it should uh, match this uh, clamp so it is possible but not sure okay lower level again here we have more tubes we have a potentiometer here very regular kind of potentiometer you may find the same one in a TV or radio in fact 
and the uh, wire ring going to the bottom to the terminal strip and uh, more tubes as you can see I am missing uh, some of the metal clamps holding the uh, tubes in place also they look like uh, this okay before we have a look at the top section we'll have a look at the bottom here is the bottom side so we have uh, terminal strips going to the next uh, section of uh, my side and as you can see they are the same uh, design you are supposed to solder make a solder bridge so probably there was a matching uh, strip terminal uh, going like this and uh, they did solder uh, each uh, one quite uh, fun there is nothing uh, insulating here the metal plate so I don't know sure if I am missing uh, some insulator shit or if it was not uh, designed at all to be uh, insulated in fact if it was uh, soldered in place with uh, the other one probably it could not uh, move around but still here we have uh, model number and the uh, serial number of the device these uh, stickers are factory seals for uh, potentiometers and uh, what else this cover is uh, an access panel to nothing in fact there is nothing particular at the other side so quite uh, weird maybe they did plug the hole because the part was used for uh, another design and uh, for display purpose I made an MDF uh, piece with uh, matching holes for the for uh, screws here. Okay, now we will have a look at the top uh, part, which is the most interesting. So the top part, I guess, it is the radio receiver itself, and the other stuff below is uh, servo control uh, stuff. So as you can see, we cannot. Uh, see much if we do not remove the shielding cover luckily enough it is just a matter of undoing some screws these uh, triangular holes here are uh, for accessing screws holding the two parts together here we have a coax uh, connector so let me undo the cover ok I did remove the screws, now I can lift this cover, so just an aluminium uh, cover. These screws here are for uh, fitting the missing uh, piece, I have not. Quite a little bit of dust inside. So as you can see here we have a very uh, compact and uh, crowded uh, electronics. On this top uh, the middle of the thing is a silver coated cylinder with uh, holes uh, all the way going down to this level we have here on the top uh, corkwood mounted uh, components lots of them with uh, this in the middle are little so miniature vacuum tubes we have uh, glass uh, Content point diode here. About the date codes of this thing, I see 1970 here. So it is uh, not uh, first uh, batch, obviously. It is a later, uh, later batch of production. I will dust it out before closing it. So it is the same thing all the way around. And here we have this uh, very interesting uh, toroidal part with uh, glass pass-through completely uh, sealed so I cannot open it at all sadly sealed with uh, solder all around so it must be some uh, sensitive uh, high frequency uh, stuff completely shielded no clue what we have in here on the lower level here you can see more uh, 
more parts mounted with a cork wood design. Some uh, mold on the wire insulators on inside also. It is a uh, very very uh, uh, often occurring with uh, Soviet stuff because it was not uh, tropicalized and it did not uh, like uh, moisture at all. You can see a lot of uh, this uh, metal can capacitors with uh, the dual capacitors here. Glass uh, pass through, glass pearl pass through, very nice. Uh, and they are very, very nice quality, still good. Okay, so it is the same all the way around. I did just notice the uh, looks like the uh, con out output of this thing, the contacts are lab labeled. We have plus, we have minus, we have num some numbers and some letters. Same, uh, is it the same at the bottom? Not sure if we have contacts on the bottom, in fact. There is one more uh, buckle. So here is it is a sandwich of two bakelite pl plates on the ear too. I will show you the, how it looks at the top side, on side, like so. You can see very, very full of wires, and here you can see all the all the, the set of uh, white wires are the pins of uh, miniature vacuum tubes. Okay, so I will dust it before I uh, put it uh, back in uh, on display a little bit because it is in display in my uh, living room so what I do usually in fact in order to avoid having too much uh, dust falling inside I did find something nice to put on it it is this it is a nose cone uh, antenna nose cone from an aircraft, probably unknown the origin, made in aluminium and uh, fiberglass, but it fits uh, nicely in fact over the top of this part, so it is good to protect uh, dust entering it, and it looks nice. So I hope you did uh, like having a look at this uh, very unusual uh, item I have. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.